Okay, wow. Apple is working on both a super expensive, barely a consumer product VR headset and a more reasonably priced mass market pair of AR glasses. That's according to Mark Gurman, who's just been making it rain rumors this week. Mark says the focus for VR will be on gaming, entertainment, and communication. But given Apple's history with hardcore gaming and just the complexities of the technologies involved, you gotta ask, will they ever come out? And if they do, will they ever be worth buying? To help answer, I've got the former VR Heads boss, Russell Hawley, on the line. Sponsored by CuriosityStream with Nebula. Real quick, YouTube says only a small percentage of you watching are actually subscribed. So if you like my videos, hit that button and we can make this community even bigger and better. So when we're talking about virtual reality, it's a set of displays that have a cover on the other side of it. So you put the headset on, and you don't see anything else. You see whatever the display is projecting to you. And that's often three-dimensional. Augmented reality refers to being able to overlay what you see in the real world with digital components. We did see Apple sort of dipping their toes into VR earlier. They set it up at WWDC 2017. That's why they had the eGPUs and they had HTC Vive out there and they had Steam out there. They were getting ready for a VR product that had an external box attached to it. And apparently Johnny Ive just said, nope, hard nope. Unsurprisingly, probably for many, this sounds like a real high-end product. Like he's pitching it as being more expensive than current VR headsets from Facebook, Oculus, HTC, all of those. And at a very low sales volume, I think he used Mac Pro as a reference. And that's different than Apple's typical mainstreaming of of more extant technologies. I think that's what makes me think more about this being a developer product than an actual consumer product. And that would justify the price. It would make sense if Apple was building this as a headset that was both virtual and augmented reality, where it had cameras mounted on the outside to do some of the things like native hand tracking and, and some of the exciting, you know, kind of mapping of a room. Those things increase the cost of a device uh, somewhat exponentially as you go and add those sensors. Uh, there's also been rumors in the past of Apple talking about eye tracking, which is an entirely different set of sensors to focus on your gaze and that kind of thing. So once you start adding those things, you not only increase the price, but you you jump pretty significantly away from what we look at as consumer VR right now. Oculus doesn't do much of any of those things. Uh, you know, HTC is still very focused in the in the PC only space and doesn't do the kind of full standalone thing. So if Apple's really trying to tackle multiple vectors at once. Uh, this would probably be the the most appropriate thing is to build a single headset that approaches all of those things, but isn't quite a consumer product yet. Mark does get into some technical details, like it's going to have a process or they're testing processors more powerful than the M1 and really high density screen display technology. It's going to end up being really important for the resolution to be really great and for the processing to be, uh, you know, actually happening on the device. There, there's been a lot of talk uh, about what if Apple Glass worked like the Apple Watch, where it had some processing there, but you know some of the other heavy lifting was actually happening on a separate thing. And we've seen other companies try that, and it's not been particularly successful. I, I think Apple's probably done the research and realized that it, it has to be all localized. And M1 is the perfect device for that right now. Like the, the chipset for that, we've already seen it do some pretty extraordinary things. Being able to drive two high-end displays on your, on your face with some some pretty decent processing behind it would be quite an accomplishment. We both wear glasses and part of Mark's report is that Apple will be handling prescription lens requirements in a way that's different than any of the VR headsets I've owned because I've always just put them on over my glasses but it sounds like that's not gonna be Apple's preferred method. There are several companies who uh, over the last couple of years have made third-party lens inserts for glasses. And that has become tremendously popular for people who know that they're gonna be in VR headsets for uh, extended periods of time. And it would make sense for Apple to go a similar route. But then an Apple solution to the whole family using it will be, yeah, you can struggle with the inserts, but you really should just buy one for everybody. Exactly, yeah. I mean, if everyone had a $4,000 headset, look at how much fun you'd have. So the part that actually really worries me is the ecosystem part that you mentioned, because we've seen Apple do this brilliantly with the iPhone, but also, poorly with like the Apple TV, where they had that set to be a gaming platform. They had some studios based on how successful the iPhone was ready to go. And then at the last minute they said, oh yeah, turns out you do need to use a Siri remote and you know, on-demand resources. And they were like, okay, we're just gonna wait and see. And turned out they never saw. So we never got that influx of big games into the Apple TV and it still has never recovered. So I worry when I hear words like, Entertainment, yes, they bought that company that does you know big concerts in VR, great. 
but I'm still nervous about what Apple's approach to gaming would be. I think the answer here you're going to find is an AR kit. If you take a look at the things that are currently available right now on the iPhone that use augmented reality, that's a solid base. There are tons of developers who have done everything from very simple, you know, kind of place a picture of something in augmented reality so you can stand next to it to a, for a picture to recreations of, of virtual reality Pong, where you're actually taking your phone and kind of tapping back and forth across, you know, massive spans. And I think based on that, Apple already has a lot of feedback for how developers would operate in that space that they wouldn't have had uh, in, in your TV analogy. So you ran VR heads for years and you probably have some of the best sense of what the actual ecosystem for this kind of product looks like. How do you see, just if you compare it to like a PC or you compare it to an iPhone or a watch, just in terms of the potential for software and services, where does VR currently fit in and where do you think it could go? The the two biggest things right now are education and entertainment uh, when it comes to the consumer space. Obviously, enterprise is a little different there. We've seen uh, just, just in January, there have been a ton of uh, VR companies that have made games for the Oculus say that this month, uh, since people opening boxes and, and getting VR headsets for Christmas have found that their sales have tripled. Uh, you know, and, and this is just, you know, people buying apps day one, not, not continuing to, to spend the way that they would in, in other places. So I see that this has been something we have heard a lot. Uh, I'm just going to backpedal a little bit here. We have heard a lot over the last couple of years about how VR and AR was going to take over everything. It was going to replace the phone. It was going to it was going to do all these things. I think what we have seen in the last year in particular is that it has become uh, it has become a different kind of game console. Uh, it, you know, not a not a replacement for the phone, but a Nintendo Switch for the phone, uh, and and in that way, it has it has already proven just in the last you know four months to be tremendously more successful than it had in the last couple of years combined. Well, when I put on the PlayStation VR for the first time, and I looked down, and I was Batman, I was sold. Oh yeah, without a doubt. So we've seen everything from Google Glass to Microsoft's various Hololenses. We've seen Magic Leap, HTC Vive, the various Oculus, including you know all the way down to the the Quest now all these different products, Gear VR, where is, what is your sense of where Apple could fit into this? And where do you sort of stack the odds on them shipping and actually doing well in that space? The big thing right now, the, the, the you know, million dollar question is, is how can Apple take on Facebook? Uh, because we don't necessarily have a VR market right now. We, we, have, a, we have an Oculus market. You know, if you, if you recommend a, a headset to someone, even if you're not a fan of uh, of Facebook's practices, Oculus is nine times out of 10, the headset that gets recommended. And, and it's because it's inexpensive and it's because it has an enormous amount of content. Uh, and we have learned many, many, many times that Apple is not interested in the let's compete on price conversation uh, and significantly more interested in the let's compete on content conversation. Uh, so if Apple can deliver quality experiences, if they can court developers who can come up with new and exciting ideas that give that kind of arcadey feeling that you have with things like Beat Saber and, uh, and you know, Pistol Whip and, and a ton of other VR games that are just constantly raking in money then I think that would end up being extremely good for Apple to sit maybe $150 above Oculus and say, however, we don't slurp up all your data. You know, you have this immersion experience. You can pull stuff from your iPhone. You have all of this deep integration with, uh, with your, your watch and your iPhone. Being able to work out in Beat Saber and have your fitness rings show up, like when you've completed something, have your fitness rings actually pop up on the screen would be an incredible experience. Uh, and that's that's a level of integration that Apple would be able to deliver on day one that Oculus is not ever going to be able to. There, the second thing, and and this is probably going to end up being the most significant way that Apple approaches this is privacy. Uh, a, you give up a lot when you put an Oculus Quest on your on your head. As great as that experience is, uh, you you give Facebook an enormous amount of information, and you now uh, must attach your Facebook account to it. Apple is going to look for ways to you know, uh, give developers a lot of the same tools without scraping any of that data. And that's going to be a huge point of contention when we actually start seeing Apple ship products. As always, you can find the full extended version of this chat up on Nebula. That's the streaming video platform I'm building along with my education creator friends like Alex, a low spec gamer, Jordan Harrod, Tech Alter, Epos Vox, Real Engineering, Real Science, and so many more. And you can find full length versions of my chats there with I, Justine, Jonathan Morris, and John Gruber, and many, many more. Also, all of my videos, completely ad-free. No sponsors like this, no nothing. 
just pure content and more of it. So what does any of this have to do with CuriosityStream? Well, as the go-to source for the absolute best documentaries on the net, they love educational content and thoughtful creators. So we worked out this deal where if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie, you not only get CuriosityStream, you also get a Nebula subscription for free. And for a limited time, CuriosityStream is 40% off. That's less than $12 a year and an even better best deal, just the best deal in the business. So click the link in the description and get CuriosityStream for over 40% off and Nebula for free. Or go to curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie. It's a great way to support this channel and educational content directly for less than $12 a year. Just click the link in the description or go to crossystream.com slash Rene Ritchie. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. For a ton more on Apple's upcoming products for 2021, click the playlist above. I've got in-depth previews and explainers that'll tell you everything you need to know about everything you may be considering buying this year. So just click that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.